Whenever we begin animation on a new short or a new episode of a series, we try to start with a shot that's simple and straightforward so that we can get into the animation groove before tackling the harder stuff. Harry Potter was the first red brick spot to have its storyboards approved, and perhaps ironically, we chose the last shot of the episode to animate first. First shot ever. Yes, we're shooting the first shot in the whole project, which is the shot of this Harry Potter spiderweb thing. No, this is not Lord of the Rings. <laughs> for the... Just like in the design phase, we again looked at the films for reference when setting up and lighting each scene for the Red Brick Saga. Most of the Harry Potter spot took place outdoors, except for the pinball-inspired Hogwarts interior shot. So this is the staircase inside of Hogwarts Castle. It originally was supposed to be a much smaller corridor, and what we realized very quickly was that there was no way we could fit our hands and the camera and minifigures inside all at once. So we made this sort of much larger corridor with a zigzagging staircase, which allowed us to get a much wider shot. We didn't have to get the camera in so close or in such a tight space. We start with Dumbledore up here at the top of the stairs, and we come over to Professor McGonagall, who's on a turntable so that she can turn at a three-quarter angle. And then we come down the stairs, we see the paintings are empty here, because they were composited in later. We animated the painting separately, and because the speed of the shot is so great, you don't really notice even if the paintings are animated. So we only animated these two here and one on the stairs down there. Um, and you can see this if you <laughs> frame by frame the, the final video, but, but animating them turned out to be a step too far. And as we come further down the stairs, we see more paintings. And we got Hagrid with Dobby on the back and they are held together by blue tack. You can see some of it by his feet there. And the last character we come to over here is Snape, who gets sort of unfortunately bludgeoned by the red brick as it travels out the window. And a bunch of the bottles that he's carrying and some of the ones on the, the shelf here get shattered into these one by one round plates. But lo, on a Tuesday night, the last shot of Harry Potter was finished at 10, yeah, I can't even read that, 10.20 20 p.m. That's not bad, but we are good. Moving on to the remaining outdoor shots, we had the first of our animated quick builds, the exterior of Hogwarts Castle. Since I like to make our sets as intricate as possible, we actually shoot all of the quick build animation in reverse, building a complete model first, and then taking it apart frame by frame. This weapon is your life. <laughs> Try not to lose it. But now a weapon is your whole life. <laughs> Cut to one falling. <laughs> <laughs> when we play this completed shot backwards, the quick build effect is achieved, and we avoid having to build detailed sets on the fly. Speaking of flying, one of the more memorable parts of the Harry Potter films are the Quidditch scenes, which we tried to recreate as faithfully as possible. So here's the setup of our um, quitted shot. And you can see we've got Harry and Malfoy chasing the snitch here. And this kind of worked in the same way that some of the other videos like Adventures of Max, uh, the Racers episode worked where there's different rows of like parallax scrolling. So each one moves at a faster rate and slows down as you go back. So this moves four studs per frame. This moves two studs per frame. This moves one stud per frame and this moves just whatever infinitesimally small amount per frame. And when you play it back, it kind of gives you that effect of the background scrolling at slower speeds the further into space you go. And it's a trick that I learned from many, many 16-bit games on Super Nintendo. Although stop motion is our method of choice, some kind of post-production work is always necessary on our projects. Whether it's adding things to a shot, like the paintings in Hogwarts Castle, or removing things, like these Quidditch supports. Even when doing special effects, we try to make things from real Lego bricks as often as possible, so that everything looks like it belongs to the same world. Some of these effects make it into the final product, and some don't. Post-production is the last stop on our end before we send a video out for approval. Once the Harry Potter episode was approved, 
it was sent off to the sound designers, and we moved on to animating the next Red Brick episode, Star Wars. <laughs>